the Laboratory for Evolution and Development uses insects to understand lots of aspects of, of biology which have applications for human health but also for our understanding of the biology of insects themselves. One of the organisms that I work with is uh, Drosophila, which is a fruit fly and has been used by geneticists for over a hundred years to try and understand genetics. Much of what we know about um, the basic, our basic understanding of genetics comes from fruit flies. We first learnt how genes are organised, how they fit on chromosomes and how they are turned on and off in, in fruit flies. The reason for that is fruit flies are really, really easy to grow. They grow on a kind of sticky porridge thing and we can control the way they grow and the speed they grow very easily. They take about 10 days to go from egg to adult so we can run lots and lots of generations in one experiment. Fruit flies are a remarkably good um, organism to study from the point of view of human genetics because in fact we share about 70% of our genes with fruit flies. So studying those genes and how they work in a fruit fly helps us understand what they might do in a human. My research is aimed at trying to understand how the environment acts with the animal's DNA to change the phenotype of the animal, so the way that it looks or behaves. And I use two animals to try and understand this. I use the honeybee and the pea aphid. My current project is working on a novel insecticide. So our aim is to develop an insecticide that will target um, all insect species except bees. Um, and the idea is that we'll apply it to crops, um, it'll kill target species but leave bees um, alive and we'll be able to go on and do their pollination job. We're particularly interested in using natural compounds extracted from plants um, because they'll have lower toxicity, environmental toxicity. Fruit flies um, have been at the core of our understanding of human genetics because we can do the sorts of experiments that we've been talking about, that we can turn genes on and off and we can ask questions about what genes are turned on and, and how do they work. So a lot of that information, when, when it was first discovered in, in fruit flies, was then transposed to humans and people started saying, well, if this gene controls this particular process in a fruit fly, we have the same process in a, in a human, can we identify the same gene? And it turns out that there are lots and lots of processes that are conserved. So one of the reasons that I'm interested in how animals respond to the environment is we know that this has importance in human health. We know that the food that your mother ate when she was pregnant with you determines your lifelong risk to some diseases, including type 2 diabetes heart, and heart disease. Now these are diseases that don't affect you until much later in your life. So what your mother ate when she was pregnant with you determines your disease susceptibility 45 or 50 years in the future. We have no idea how this happens, okay? But this is really hard to study in humans because of that, that huge time gap. And so by trying to understand how bees are responding to their environment, we're hoping that there might be things in common with the way that, that mammals, including humans, are responding to their environment. The information flows both ways. We've, we've learned a lot in Drosophila and have applied it to humans, and now we're taking what we know about in humans and using Drosophila to test those ideas and, and learn about them. So there's a kind of intimate contact between how we understand development in a, in a human and how we understand it in a fly. We're trying to understand whether the same processes we see in honeybees that are controlling whether worker bees reproduce or not are controlling the way aphids switch between sexual and asexual reproduction. So we're, we're taking what we know about aphids and what we know about bees and saying what's in common because what's in common might be what's in common in humans or controlling reproduction or, or response to the environment in humans. What's happened in recent years in genetics is that new technologies have been invented to sequence DNA. So when uh, the Drosophila genome was sequenced in, in 2000 and when the human genome was sequenced in 2002, it took a very long time and an enormous amount of money to get to that point. The investment was very large. Now we have techniques which sequence DNA at much higher uh, rates and at much lower costs. And so actually it's quite, well it's reasonably cheap to sequence the genome of these animals and that has given this huge flood of of data from insects, but it's also important for, for everyone else because it means that in a clinical situation people might have their genome sequenced when they come into hospital because it's now, now relatively cheap and easy to do. So there's been a kind of revolution in genetics and, and it's about the technologies for sequencing DNA and it's going to make a massive impact both on research like mine but also on human health and, and the way we deal with genetic disease.